Okay, House Democrat Majority Leader Steny Hoyer countering Nancy Pelosi, admitting walls do work in some places. So for the people who are living in those border states, especially with some barrier that has been constructed, would you remove those existing barriers because you say they don't work? No, no. So they work there? Obviously, they work some places. Hmm. That's a big moment. Yeah. Will we see Democrats move closer to embracing a border barrier? That's the question this morning. Republican Congressman Michael Burgess oversees a border state. He's in Texas and he joins us live. Good morning to you, sir. I mean, in the same interview, which was a great one that you should watch if you get time, uh, Brett Baer got him to say that uh, walls can work and do work and also that he doesn't think walls are immoral. This is Nancy Pelosi's right hand man. What do you think of that? Well, it was a breakthrough, I guess. Um, and um, we've all kind of been waiting to see if, when, when people are actually going to talk to each other about this. It has been, uh, it has been a series of speeches and talking points to this, to this time. And, and uh, I, I hope that it's indicative that there is, there is now going to be a, a little bit of a loosening of the logjam. You know, we were in the, which I guess I didn't see uh, Mr. Hoyer's interview yesterday because I was on the rules committee and, <laughs> and trying to work to get the government open. Uh, but the comments continue to be made that, uh, boy, if you just open the government for 30 days and let us work on this and, and, and we'll get to a conclusion. But if I recall correctly, when the speaker and uh, the minority leader in the Senate went down to the White House and they, the, the president said, well, if I allow things to open for 30 days, will you work with me? And they said, no. Right. And he said, okay, goodbye. And that was the end of that discussion. Well, so it, it, it needs to change and people do need to talk. Of course you can come to a, a compromise and come to a solution on this. It just needs to happen sooner rather than later. And so we obviously heard what Steny Hoyer had to say yesterday on this program. We had Congresswoman Katie Hill on, um, a Democrat who says she comes from a law enforcement family, who says she believes in a border barrier and she wants these conversations to keep moving forward. Forward. So, do you think we kind of start to see the domino effect now in the Democratic Party? Well, I, I guess indicative. Uh, Congress was supposed to be at home on a district work period last week, and the Speaker has now canceled that. So, the Congress will be at the House at least will be here and working next week, and that's a good thing. We shouldn't we should not be not working when mm -hmm. uh, when something so important is at stake. Uh, I think the uh, the story that came out of Puerto Rico with uh, 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 people taking a vacation with lobbyists on the beach. I think that I think that hurt their narrative. So, uh, yeah, perhaps there is. Uh, a, a, a little bit of frustration on the other side with how things uh, how things have actually gone and and the narrative that surrounds them. Yeah, Hoyer just went against the two big reasons that Pelosi has for for turning down this idea of some kind of a barrier. I, I thought that was a very big moment. Mm -hmm. Let's talk for a second about something else that the speaker did, and that's uh, asking the president uh, to delay or cancel the State of the Union or just give it in, in writing. Um, and she makes a point that they've never had a State of the Union when the government was partially shut down. But what do you think? Oh, the, the, the president needs to come and deliver the State of the Union. It's uh, the expectation that the American people have. Uh, the president, it, you know, it's, uh, I'll admit, having been on the other side when a, a president of the other party is in the White House, there's nothing quite like the, the, the majesty of coming and addressing a joint session of Congress with all of the Joint Chiefs of Staff there and all of the diplomatic corps. It's a big deal and it's a big, it's a big stage for the president to be on at the same time. Time, people do want to hear from the president and they are it is a constitutional requirement that the president from time to time comes and and delivers uh, uh, remarks on the either in person or in writing but uh, he delivers remarks on the state of the union so it's it's a requirement that he come do you see an issue though with it being either delayed or in writing no 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 we cannot be I mean, this is I, I mean I my opinion, it's unacceptable to say that the president should deliver his remarks in writing. It, it just that yeah. that no one wants that. The the president needs to. This is, you know, I guess you see this over and over again, and the Democrats are anxious to do things that don't well, they don't want to normalize the presidency of Donald Trump. But right. he is the president. He is the people's president. He was elected. He needs to come and deliver the State of the Union address. Yes. And I bet he does a great job. They want to take the, the juice out of it. It's a big moment for the yeah. president, and they don't like that. Yes, All it right. is. Thank you, sir.